everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to the 30th episode of my Terraria modded playthrough. So I've realised something since the last episode, my friends. We have an operator NPC and what does the operator NPC sell? Treasure bags. So do you know what that means? It means that we don't actually have to farm out the Leviathan and Anahita boss. As long as we've got the cash, the moolah, we can simply purchase these treasure bags and just keep going until we get ourselves the mask. And then, at that point, of course, we can move on to the next couple of bosses. In today's episode, I'd like to try and take down the Astrum Aureus and the Golem boss, ideally, because in the next episode, I want it to be the big event episode. The Pumpkin Moon, the Frost Moon, and Martian Man has all rolled into one episode. I think that would be a really, really fun time, and it's something I'm really looking forward to. Before we do anything, though, I want to make sure I'm getting the best prices for what I'm purchasing. So what that means, my friends, is we are going to purchase for ourselves one of these bad boys, one of these bad boys, and one of these bad boys. I'm sure you guys can tell what I'm heading for here. But yeah, my friends, as always, I do want to start off by saying an enormous thank you for all of your lovely support throughout this series. I'm actually recording this episode straight after the last one. That's how much fun I'm having with this mod at the moment. As I keep saying, we're really starting to get into the meat and bones of this mod here, and I'm just having so much fun. I truly am. So, ladies and gentlemen, modded treasure bags. So now we only have to pay three platinum 57 gold as opposed to uh however much it was before oh wait do i actually have to go out of the shop to put this stuff on apparently so so yeah instead of four platinum 46 it's now dot 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 three platinum 57 that's a hefty discount isn't it so purchase a treasure bag open it up do we have a mask? It doesn't look like it. Uh, we do have a new weapon, though. The Gastric Belcher Staff. <laughs> okay. A bottomless water bucket as well. That's pretty cool. But yeah, my friends, if you're still enjoying the series and want to continue seeing more, please do be sure, of course, to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell, of course, if you don't want to miss out on my future content. And of course, if you want to go one further with the support, you can use code Python when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs for 5% off. Now then, check it out. We've got the Anahita mask. We've also got ourselves a T mod loader dev set here, which is pretty awesome a brackish flask um i mean anahita leviathan either or i don't think it really matters which mask we go for we'll buy one more just to see if we can get ourselves the actual leviathan head Nah, yeah, it doesn't look like it you know what i'm gonna go for the anahita mask i don't think it's going to matter all too much i wonder if it's time to upgrade our summon weapon my friends we've got the igneous exaltation here with 58 summon damage but then we've got this gastric belcher staff with 105 summon damage aberrations fire vomit at nearby enemies with every third attack firing bubbles Okay, that sounds pretty cool. So taking off the spinny bladey boys, we're going to try out this gastric belcher staff. Ooh. So yeah, we can have three of them and they all do over 100 damage each. Whoa. Okay, that's going to be pretty nice, isn't it? All right, my friends. So what is coming up next? Astrum Aureus. We need an astral chunk. We require 30 stardust and 20 fallen stars pretty sure we've already got all that stuff so let's get it done and there we have it my friends just like that astral chunk summons astrum aureus when used in the astral infection during nighttime and rages during the day and of course because it's modded it's non-consumable we have as many attempts as we desire or need so my thinking is my friends we start the platforms from the very very top of this little obelisk type thing here then we won't hopefully wind up bumping into it all right well then ladies and gentlemen nice basic arena i.e a platform in the sky this should eradicate the terrain problems that we may wind up having uh so let's make sure we are popping into nighttime. Uh, I'm realizing I don't have a clock on me. Why don't I have a clock on me? That's very, very stupid. Right, let's reset the night, shall we? There we have it. All right, so astral chuck. Holy moly. Okay, there he is. <laughs> Holy guacamole. All right, 282,000 health is the amount we need to be taking down. Oh my word, he's big. Whoa! He has no issues keeping up with you, does he? Wow. Yeah, he's a little bit nuts, actually. 2,000 plus damage per second, though. I mean, I definitely cannot complain about that. 
So there's a bunch of fire going on. And then, yep, there we have it. A whole bunch of nonsense. God. He really doesn't have any issues keeping up with it, does he? Right, so far so good. Ow, jeez. All right, he's got about a third. But obviously, we can't go ahead and uh, celebrate too hard. Not just yet. Right, there we are. Right, so we're just taking that guy out of the game. We've got this guy roaming along. Oh, my word. I honestly can't tell what's going on at this point. What I need to have happen... Oh, it's for him to get nice and close. So I know that I'm hitting this guy at the very least. There we are. Right, a quarter left. We are about to have a little bit of that. Yeah, baby. Love to see it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Come on, come on, come on. Maximize that damage there, Pythonator. Come on now. We got this. We got this. We got this. We have like literally what? A sixth of his health left. Maybe even an eighth. Whoa. Again, though, let's make sure we're not celebrating too hard. Not just yet, anyway. Oh, 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 get, oh, I'm dead. What? Python's infection spread too far. So that's how you're going to play it, is it? You know what, my friends? As nice as the Terror Blade is, I really do genuinely want to try to use some of these other weapons here. Yeah, the Terror Blade did the business when it came to, uh, you know, taking down Leviathan and Anahita in the last episode. But I want to make sure I'm using a nice variety of weapons. So this one, I'm going to try the Tyrant Yarim's Ultra Sword. I'm realizing I haven't even got my proper loadout on. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... That five additional armor penetration, that could have been the difference between life and death previously. Whoopsie. Yeah, I kind of done goof there, huh? Ow! Oh, this guy with his freaking lunging. It's crazy, man. Yeah, a little bit on the crazy side. Never mind. We'll see what we can do here. We seem to be regening quite nicely. Ah, no, no, no. Right, do your jumpy. Right, we dash under. Do another jumpy. Oh, that's weird. Normally, there's three jumps. Oh! And there was. You absolute son of a gun. What was with the delay before that third jump? That's a little bit weird. Oh, when you realize you don't have the cake on. Why do I always forget to put the bloody cake on? There you go. Having the cake literally eradicates the need to have buff stations on an arena. It's ridiculous. Truly it is. You literally get the campfire buff, the heart lantern buff, the bast statue buff. You get all of that stuff with the ultimate cake. So, yeah, like I say, eradicates the need for buff stations entirely. Yeah, baby! Oh, yes! I love it when we get two loads of adrenaline in the same boss fight, dude! Makes me feel like I'm doing a good job, baby! Oh, yeah! All right. Once again, though, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Okay, he's way over the left-hand side here gonna be a little bit of a rage buff here okay i imagine there's gonna be a bunch of jumps coming up any second now yep there we have it and there's another one and presumably another one yep there we have it okay 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 and another one and ladies and gentlemen that's all we needed <laughs> yeah baby love to see it oh absolutely love to see it my friends you just got to learn the ai's it's as simple as that broskies <laughs> oh, yeah, man. All right, very cool. So we got ourselves the uh, plushie going on here, which is very, very awesome. Let's go ahead and put that bad boy away. What else have we got here? There's the relic, of course. There's the treasure bag. We've got essences of helium amongst uh, a whole bunch of other stuff here, actually. Uh, there's the lore, of course. Ever pragmatic, Draydon dispatched this machine to locate and analyze the source of the astral infection. While nominally for reconnaissance, the Aureus model is heavily armed and can scale any terrain. It performed admirably, at least until it was assimilated into the infection. Sapient minds have enough real power to resist the infection's call indefinitely. However, even the finest silicon is not beyond its reach. Drayden prefers his creations to serve after all. With this experiment concluded, he will certainly be examining you next. Watch yourself. <laughs> it sounds like Drayden is starting to get a little bit miffed with us, huh? <laughs> so let's go ahead and make a bit of a start on our next display area, the Ostrom Aureus Relic. And of course, the law item. Very good. So, opening up the treasure bag, what do we have going on here? The Armored Gravistar Sabaton. What the hell? 
Tap the down key to increase your fall speed for five seconds. Striking the ground with increased fall speed will cause an astral explosion. Oh! Okay. Right. What I'm not seeing, unfortunately, is a mask. Oh, whoa! Okay. Vengeance drop consumable permanently increases adrenaline mode damage by 15% and damage reduction by 5%. Hell yeah! Why would I pass that up? So we've got a vanity item, another vanity item, uh, Leonid Progenitor with 107 rogue damage, the Aurora Blazer, 85 range damage, Astral Binoculars, another vanity item, and then the rest of it, what's this? Aureus Cell restores 200 mana is a material and grants increased mana regen and magic power. Okay, there's a lot of stuff this thing can do, actually. We've got Oralis, we've got the Star Core, Gravity Normalizer Potions, Astral Injection, Astral Beacon, and a Celestial Jewel. Boosts life regen even while under the effects of a damaging debuff. That sounds pretty damn cool. You know what? Many a time have I been annoyed at the fact that I can't regen my health while also got debuffs going on. This literally cancels it. Or this accessory, more to the point, cancels it. Why would I not go for that, is the question. You know? Seriously, why would I not go for that? What I want to do is see if I could buy myself the treasure bags right quick. You usually are uh, able to buy these things after, like, certain waves. Like, for example, I think early on, Skeletron. If you defeat Skeletron, you get access to the earlier treasure bags. But no, apparently, as you can see here, there you have it. We have the Astrum Aureus. For some reason, when you're within a shop, it doesn't let you change these things over. Moderately annoying, but, oh well. Let's see what we can get here. Uh, whoa. The Nebula. Yo! It's like a pre-Moon Lord solar eruption, bro! Oh, that's cool. Okay, how about a mask? We've got Jim's helmet. That does not count, unfortunately. Okay, so before going ahead with further treasure bags, I do want to go ahead and uh, make that crown jewel upgrade. Where the devil is my crown jewel? There it is. Uh, what was the other things we needed? I think it was teleport potions, right? Uh, yep, we've got three of those. And the other thing was a bunch of sea prisms. Pretty sure we have a bunch of those as well. Prism shards, sea prisms. And we need to go to a mithril anvil, and we should be able to do this thing. There it is, the celestial jewel. We put a little bit of warding on this, and we have, once again, a massively defense-boosting accessory. Apparently, we can teleport to a random location while no bosses are alive as well, but I haven't got that control binded to anything just yet. Uh, the question is, what do we take out in favor of this thing? I mean, I think it's going to have to be the stinger necklace, isn't it? As nice as this thing is... I genuinely think the Celestial Jewel is going to be a far, far better choice. So, back to the search for the mask for Astrum Aureus. Oh, there it is. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> that was expensive. That was expensive, bro. Holy crap, holy. That was really, really, really very expensive. And don't worry about me just selling all this stuff back. I've got pretty much all the other drops that we can even get. So, yeah, there we have it. Astrum Aureus is now officially complete. Bada bing, bada boom. So, just to quickly check this out as well on the uh, text here. I completely missed this. The astral enemies have been empowered. A faint ethereal click can be heard from the dungeon. And a star has fallen from the heavens. Ew. Okay, looks like we've got some things to explore, my friends. Some stuff and things. Now, check this out, my friends. We can actually buy a teleportation potion that takes us directly to the jungle temple entrance, which is going to be very useful because I would like to go there next, actually. After checking out the uh, astral biome, just to see if there are any changes. Ooh, hello. Is that a new ore I see? I can't mine it, whatever it is. So... Yeah, I wonder if that's the astral ore. I don't actually know what you require in order to be able to mine it. I guess would be maybe a pixel, but I honestly don't know. Genuinely, I have no idea. Yeah, check it out. We're actually getting ourselves some new stuff here. Deadly astral scythe, 283 melee damage. Oh no, it's just gone down a whole bunch. We've also managed to pick ourselves up a stellar cannon, 260 range damage. And insane knockback launches an explosive astral crystal. So it's infinitely shooting. There's no ammo to it. But you have got to be super accurate with it. It does not appear to home in. 
Oh, I could be wrong, of course. No, it's definitely not homing in. No, my friends. Bada bing. Bada bo Whoa. It takes you directly into the golem spawning room. What the? Okay. That's kind of cool. I can't say I was expecting that. Well, there you have it. <laughs> all right, the good news is we have just about cleared this room out of all of the wooden spikes. Which means I think we'll be just about good in terms of giving this thing a bit of a go. Needless to say, the first thing we need to do is place down a bunch of platforms. I guess the question, my friends, is this. Are we going to be able to breeze our way through Gollum like we usually can in normal vanilla Terraria? Normally, Gollum is considered a pretty laughable boss, let's be honest here. But it's modded. You never know what they may have done to this boss. I just don't know. So there's one thing I'm already noticing in this temple, and that's the fact that it's very dark in here. Is it just me who thinks it's really, really dark in here? Is that a sign of things to come? I have no idea. All I do know is that we've got this thing set up. And I think we would be okay in giving this thing a bit of a go. So, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Gollum? Let's see what happens. I honestly don't know how this is going to go. But we shall see. So, uh, yeah. Already looking like the fists are almost dead. So that's hilarious. <laughs> but it looks like we're not doing any damage to the main golem boss himself. Oh, no, now we are. So, yeah, it looks like you have to get rid of his arms first. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, something to bear in mind. That's definitely a change compared to the normal vanilla boss. But no matter. We're still doing kind of all right. I actually have an incredibly itchy nose right now. I seriously need to itch it. Otherwise, it is going to distract me something fierce. Ah! Uh -huh. No! Please! Please, body, stop! <laughs> I don't want to have an itchy nose, bro! That's not cool, man! Of all the times to give me an itchy nose, seriously, bro! Oh, man. Okay, right. Uh, yeah. I just realized I haven't been using my rage buff. I probably should. There's about 60 million projectiles going on right now. Um, and yeah, the golem head is going a bit nuts. Oh, crap. Okay, just a few more seconds, and then we've actually got a heal, would you believe? Uh, there we are, just about. Uh, 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 there's a lot going on here. There's 50 million freaking things going on. But, ladies and gentlemen, he's dead. Oh, 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 gimme, gimme. Oh, oh, it's so much better. You know what? When you actually can itch your nose after a boss fight, it's, it's just more satisfying, isn't it? That is the most satisfying itch of a nose I've had in a while. There we have it. All right, so there we are. Check it out, my friends. We do indeed have ourselves the Pixel, capable of mining lizard bricks. Can mine scoria ore located in the abyss? That sounds pretty interesting, doesn't it? All right, the only thing is, of course, we did not manage to get ourselves the Master Mode drop, which, of course, we need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Wait, I can't pick this thing up. Oh, wait, I need to do this thing. Uh, boom, there we are. Lizard Alto. Right, now we can fight Gollum wherever the hell we please. Let's not forget, of course, about the law item here. What a sad, piteous thing. Truly a mockery in every sense of the word. The lizards were abandoned by the deity long ago. They set upon creating the idol as a replacement. The result is an amalgamation of the concepts and themes of many gods, most prominently the heat of the sun. It is a far cry from a mechanical god for the better. The alternative is too chilling to consider. While I believe it barely deserves mention, the lizards revere it on flinchingly i see no need to intervene in affairs beneath me and my people so yeah even the calamity folks think that the golem boss is a bit of a laugh so yeah <laughs> all right so there we are relic more item and all we need to do is get ourselves the master mode drop and we have another display area completely done and also yeah we didn't even use the temple key because we have the teleport potion so uh i guess that's gonna go in the chest there why not well then opening up the golem treasure bag we have ourselves essences of sunlight a heat ray beetle husks and the cloaked shiny stone which is actually a material for the camper 
Oh, God. You deal 90% less damage unless stationary. Standing still grants buffs dependent on what weapon you're holding. Standing still provides a damaging aura around you. While moving, you regenerate health as if standing still provides a small amount of light in the abyss. Okay. We've also got the Heat Ray, which is a material for the laser. Uh, 131 magic damage, 35% crit chance. Fires a highly volatile concentrated solar beam. Ooh. And that remains a material for Aether's Whisper or Aether's Whisper. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> Something to consider later down the line. 826 magic damage. Interestingly, the beetle husks only allow you to make the default vanilla stuff. There's actually no modded content from the beetle husks, which is interesting. Huh. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, we did pretty good, but now we have to either A, see if we can simply buy the lizard golem treasure bags. Actually, no, we can't just do that, can we? Ah. So we can get the masks from treasure bags for the calamity bosses, but we can't get the vanilla treasure bags and get the master mode drops from them. Ah, so we still need to grind out the vanilla bosses. Ah, okay. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Ah, and there we have it. The lizard battery pack. Summons golem without an altar. I mean, we do have an altar, but sod it. My, oh my. Is it me or does this guy seem a little bit enraged outside of the golem temple? Because holy crap, is he getting some hype? Holy moly. <laughs> wow. Craziness going on here, my friends. Well, the Nebulash is nice, but I don't think it is quite on par with the rest of our stuffs that we have here, my friends. I mean, come on. This is a hard one to beat, my friends. The Tyrant Yarim's Altar Sword. Holy crap! This guy is berserk! What the heck? Oh! Okay! Okay there, son, okay. Right, I think the key to this is trying to focus one of these guys down. In my case, I'd really rather like to get the head out of the game because it is incredibly annoying, actually. Because <laughs> he just goes all over the place. Look at him, he's just all over the shop, dude. Oh, Enraged Golem is crazy, Golem, dude. Oh, God, I'm so going to die now. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to be living much longer here, guys. Oh, jeez. Okay, come on, come on. I can take down the head at the very least, please. Come on, man. This guy's got me nearly done. Come on. Okay, his head is down. Now it's just he himself. He has incredible movement speed. Like, seriously incredible movement speed, but I'm hoping... Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, Enraged Golem is a little bit crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is this guy doing the next freaking Apollo space mission or something? What the devil, dude? Holy crap. Holy, man. Holy crap. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm not dying that time. No way, Jose. All right. Uh, no sign of a master mode drop. Of course. Huh? I just took down Gollum's head and then he despawned. You son of a gun. Unbelievable behavior. He shoots up a bunch of the projectiles and then dash the other way so the head actually hits them. That is the plan. Um, he says as he's actually kind of failing quite a lot. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff going on right now. Okay, he's going berserk mode. But no matter. We'll make this thing work somehow. Um, quite how. I'll never know. Uh, okay. A uh, little bit of rage buff. Maybe we can get a bit of damage going on here. Oh, my word. Lots of projectiles. Lots of him. Come on, take up a head at the very least. Yes, got him. Right, now we have a little bit of freedom. Come on now. There he is. Yeah. Uh, Crazy mode. Crazy mode. Nope, none of that. Come on. Okay. 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 Calm yourself there, son. Calm yourself there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's done. Right. Yes, we got it. 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 The Guardian Golem is the Master Mode exclusive drop for the Golem Vanilla Boss. <laughs> we got him. 
That actually didn't take too many tries. I'm pretty happy with that, dudes. All right, we open this thing up. We got ourselves a sunstone. Excellent. That is actually excellent. You want to know why that's excellent? We just pop on down here right quick. I am 1,000% sure we have one or two of these bad boys. Yep, there we are. There's the moonstone. Do we have a moon charm? We've got the Neptune shell. We need a moon charm as well. Now, let me do a little bit of a search. Moon charm. Oh, we do. We actually do. It's in here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> I think you guys know what we're going to be going for right here. There's the celestial stone. Moon shell. Celestial shell. Grants immunity to night wither and holy flames. Moderately reduces breath loss in the abyss. I mean, it's just a great all-round accessory, isn't it? You could put any modifier on this and it would still work because it really is just a blanket buff to all of your stats, isn't it? We'll go for a little bit of warding. A blanket buff to all of our various stats, I think is a good thing to have indeed. The question is, again, what do we take off in place of it? The Asgard Dweller, we've only just made the Luxor's Gift, potentially. I don't know, man. I quite enjoy having the amount of buffs the Celestial Shell gives. I mean, yeah, take it off. 106 defense. Put it on. 116 defense. That's an increase of 10. Now then, real quick, let's go ahead and paint the bases of these. We'll do a nice gray for Astrum Aureus and a nice orange. Oh, that's barely any different to the normal base. But yeah, an orange base for Gollum. So there we have it once again, keeping our collection area nicely up to date. Well, today, my friends, the comment of the day comes from Fixit4278, who I must say, I had to paraphrase this just a little bit. Uh, you might have to replace your Master Ninja Gear since you have the Asgard's Valor, one of the most important accessories until Providence, which is a Moon Lord boss. The reason I picked this out is because, uh, yeah, guys, check this out. Grants a holy dash, which can be used to ram enemies. So in other words, we have two loads of dash abilities. So if I was to take off the Master Ninja gear, check it out. I can still dash. Uh, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Hey. So what that means is we could actually probably get away with putting Luxor's gift back on. I mean, why would I not do that? Yeah. Get my little extra projectiles going back on. <laughs> yeah, baby. And yeah, as you can see, we can still dash. I mean, there's not really much point in having two loads of accessories that dash, eh? You only need one. So yeah, Asgard's Valor is obviously the one we're going for. Uh, so let me just make sure I've got all the good reforges on these things. I do. And yeah, Chlorify Armor. Still coming in clutch. I love this armor. It truly is something to behold in this mod. I absolutely adore it. So then, my friends, thank you very much for watching. That is going to wrap it up for now. If you guys have enjoyed today's nice action-packed episode, I would, of course, very much appreciate it if you'd head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. Remember, 500 likes is what we're going for for the episodes in the series. If we can hit it, amazing. It'll be more than enough to tell me that you guys are still excited for the series and want to continue seeing more. Of course, hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But yeah, my friends, I mean, look at the amount of bosses we've taken down now. I would have to say... Maybe we're about halfway through now. Yeah. It might look like there's more, but you have to consider there's only like two, four, six little display slots at the top. Whereas down here, we have quite a lot. So yeah, I would estimate we're about halfway through at this point. But yeah, lots more stuff to come. And honestly, my friends, it's only going to get more and more and more insane. And that is why I love the Calamity mod. Because it is just insane. Some of the weaponry and gear you get later on is just incredible like there's no other words for it so yeah stick around if you're excited for that but for now thanks for watching have a fantastic rest of your day thank you for all your support and i'll see you guys in the next episode Bye bye